and just seeing your clothes in a way you've never seen them before. Life is really all about our perception, right? So if you can have a new perception, a new outlook on those staple pieces in your wardrobe, I think you'll be feeling really inspired. <music> Welcome back to the channel. My name is Savannah. If you're new here on my channel, I talk about the fun side of minimalism. And today we are talking style. This video is how to discover your own personal style. This was a journey that I was on for many a years. I was always searching for that perfect piece of clothing that would fully encapsulate my entire personality. And that's a lot of pressure to put on a pair of pants. When in reality, I found that discovering my personal style was something much more simple. It was more an act of recentering and getting back to the core of who I am. It's going to be a fun time. I'm going to go through some questions and then I'm also going to walk you through a few exercises and practices you can do with your own closet so that your personal style truly reflects your current authentic self. Let's get into it. Question number one to ask yourself is historically, what patterns have you seen in your wardrobe? I know we have a lot of changes in different periods of our life based on who we're spending time with, maybe where we live in the country or in the world that heavily influence our style. But if you can draw any overarching conclusions about these patterns you see, maybe it's a certain color that you've been wearing, a certain print or silhouette is a huge one. Do you prefer your clothing to be kind of cropped and boxy? Do you like a slim fit, more tight fitting look? And if you get stuck, what you can do is you can think back to certain times of your life that you felt really confident and supported in your clothing, or maybe you felt very beautiful at that time in your life. Another thing you can do is look back at photos, photos on your camera roll, maybe on social media, if you post a lot on social media, maybe there's certain milestones, a birthday party, a graduation, or just a vacation you went on. When you look at those photos, you know, dang, I felt really good in that. And once you have some ideas flowing in this brainstorm, definitely write them down. I think it's really helpful and actually kind of fun to see them on paper or in your notes app as an exercise. I know for me, I'm looking at silhouettes. I really love silhouettes with a lot of length. I think it matches my body type. So I've always been really drawn to dusters, long kimonos, trench coats. Another one for me is if I'm wearing a top, I really like it cropped at my waist. I don't really like longer shirts. I guess just anything mid-length doesn't work for me. It's kind of like long or cropped and not a lot in between. I'm really into light colored denim and medium wash denim, especially distressed. That's always been a major cornerstone of my style, even dating back to elementary school. I remember finding some amazing distressed light wash jeans from Ross that I got in like fourth or fifth grade that I just felt like were the best jeans I've ever owned. <laughs> also knitwear. I have always loved knitwear, loved sweaters, especially creams and whites. Those are the colors I've drawn to. And then beyond creams and whites, I've always loved light blues, light pinks, and kind of different shades of yellow. I haven't dipped my toes as much into like purples, greens, oranges, but yeah, that's, that's my list of my patterns. Make your list and see what conclusions you can draw. Question number two you can ask yourself is what is your aesthetic? What is that artistic representation that sums up your style? I know there are those very traditional categories, preppy, bohemian, grunge, but don't feel like you have to pigeonhole yourself into one of these very cliche, classic high school cliques sort of style. Definitely get creative with how you want to describe your outward appearance. So I created a list for myself with quite a few words. I have beachy, coastal, worn, lived in, memories, tomboy, varsity, collegiate, flirty, feminine, easy, electric, danceable, and skin. So those are all my words. And then I started my top faves of that list. What I came up with was romantic beach varsity. And I feel like that encapsulates my style very, very much. I definitely am into that California coastal look, light colors, flowing fabrics. I'm really inspired by surf culture and skate culture. And then romantic. I love romantic silhouettes. My body type is very athletic, not super soft and feminine. So I really like those soft feminine silhouettes and styles. And then the last word on my list is varsity, which I also was playing around with the word collegiate. I feel like preppy. I don't love the word preppy. I'm not super preppy, but I am super into just college stripes. I really like letterman's jackets. I would say that sums up my style really, really well. I love the textures. I love felt. I'm really into cable knit. I love an embroidered logo. And so yes, that's that's the varsity or collegiate aspect of my style. So those are the three words that I've come up with that really represent my style aesthetic. 
what are yours, get creative, get the pen to paper, get the ideas flowing. It really is such a beautiful, fun exercise to get to the core of how you see yourself and the way you want others to see you. Question number three is how do you feel when you are in your element style beauty wise? Do you feel strong, powerful, empowered? Do you feel sexy? Do you feel cozy? Do you feel protected? Is it an armor for you? Do you feel masculine? Do you feel feminine? There are so many emotions and feelings that clothing and style can provide. Imagine yourself in some different scenarios. Maybe they are memory scenarios that have actually happened or maybe they're scenarios that are in your future. It could be a situation at work. It could be a vacation. It could be just daily life, hanging on the couch or hanging with friends. What are those emotions that you want to feel? For me, I want to feel strong, authentic, and supported. That is my baseline. If I'm not wearing something that makes me feel those three things, then I'm probably not going to head out the door. Or if I do, I will probably be feeling a little bit cranky because I'm insecure or uncomfortable and nobody wants to feel like that. <laughs> We are on to the first exercise, which is to declutter your closet Marie Kondo style. If you have not read this book, you guys, it is truly life-changing. It's in the title. It is the life-changing magic of tidying up. I cannot recommend this closet decluttering method more. It is truly, truly just amazing. So what you're going to do is pull every single thing out of your closet. Yes, it's messy. Yes, it's labor intensive. Make sure you have a nice coffee and a bagel first because you are going to need some fuel. And what you're going to do is pick up every single piece of clothing. Yes, off the hanger, in your hands, and you're going to see if it sparks joy. What is spark joy? Spark joy is when you hold on to something that is meaningful and feels good that you have positive association with. Let's say your favorite worn in t-shirt from high school that you wear to bed at night. When you pick that up, all of the cells are going to raise up like whoop in your body and it's just a feeling that you'll have. And similarly with something that doesn't make you feel good, let's say you have a super itchy sweater that also is too small and has a whole just negative associations. When you pick that sweater up, it's going to feel like like all the cells in your body are going to lower down. So I don't know if that resonates with you at all. When I read in the book, I was a little iffy on it, but when I put it into practice, it worked better than anything I've ever tried before. And what's truly remarkable about this process is that you're only left with things that you absolutely adore and that feel good right now. And you can say goodbye to all of these other things that do not suit you in your current life. These things have taught us a lesson. Maybe we don't look great in polka dots like we thought we did, or maybe you got a gift. It's just letting the gift go you were never going to use, or maybe something that was too small for you, you just wanted to lose a few pounds. Get those things out of your closet and just only keep things that make you feel all the things that you just wrote down. For me, strong, supported, and authentic, and if they aren't matching that criteria, I'm going to say goodbye. Exercise number two is creating a vision board for your personal style. I highly recommend using Pinterest or if you have another app that you like. Pinterest is a little shop heavy, so that's a little bit irritating. They're always trying to sell you something these days, but if you can just stay on track and just use the visuals as inspiration, I find that it's a really easy, free way to do this. And what I recommend for starting off your board is actually starting from your current existing wardrobe and the things in your wardrobe that feel like your most solid pieces that feel like the most you, and then searching for outfit inspiration that fits one of those pieces. So pick three to five items for me. I know I have my light wash overalls. I have my long wool black coat. I have a black silky maxi skirt or midi skirt rather. So what I'm going to do is go in and just look for outfit inspiration and start pinning things onto the board there. And that way I can see what I have to work with for outfits based on things I already have instead of just going out and trying to shop for something brand new because I already know I feel good in these pieces. I love these pieces. I don't have to spend more money. And through this process, I find that I find outfit inspiration of combinations that I would never have put together myself. Maybe it's different color combinations, prints and patterns, and just seeing your clothes in a way you've never seen them before. Life is really all about our perception, right? So if you can have a new perception, a new outlook on those staple pieces in your wardrobe, I think you'll be feeling really inspired to put new things together. And another thing to layer into your vision board is going to be just any visuals that really make you feel inspired. It could be a style icon you really look up to, a designer, a stylist, or it could be a movie or a time period. Dive in, get creative, and really explore the depths of what Pinterest has to offer. At least I find some inspiring content on there. For me, one of my style icons is Suki Waterhouse. She's an actress and musician. She's just 
probably my biggest style icon. She has the best video on YouTube, you guys. I watch this video a few times a year. It is just, ugh, it gives me life. It's Suki Waterhouse's wardrobe tour on the British Vogue channel. I'll link it in the description below. Another one for me is the designer, Aza Ziegler. She has the brand Kaya Del Mar, Kali Del Mar? I think it's Kaya Del Mar. And she's actually from here in the Bay Area and she has amazing, amazing beach surf inspired styles. She's had some really cool stuff over the years that I've purchased. Her prices are more expensive now, so I can't really afford it, but she does these amazing, amazing knitwear sets. They're just incredible. Both of those women are massively inspiring to me, so I have layered those into my board, along with some beautiful imagery that represents who I am now and what I want my style to be going forward. And the third exercise I recommend is continuing to experiment and just putting yourself out there. Do not be afraid of doing things you have never done before just because people aren't used to seeing you in a certain look, in a certain color. In reality, no one else is really worried about anyone but their own self. That is something that I have learned over the years. If you wear a bright color, if you wear a crazy hat, no one really thinks it's that weird, just you do. So. Get out there and experiment. Try some color combos you've never done before. Layer some crazy patterns. Wear a short skirt, wear a longer, more modest outfit if you've been used to showing skin and you wanna try something else out. You know, I did the turtleneck under the spaghetti straps thing this year. I actually like it. I think it looks really cute on me and I thought it was kind of dorky before. You never know till you try it on. And you know what? Not everything is a slam dunk. It is trial and error. Lord knows that I've tried some things that didn't quite work. I have always been obsessed with these tailored matching jackets and mini skirts, very Chanel inspired. Chanel from Screen Queens, Blair from Gossip Girl. I just wanted that matching tweed set and I have really, I've tried, I'll insert some <laughs> photos of kind of some preppy looks that I've done. And I don't know, when I wore those things, I just never really felt like myself. I always felt like I was wearing a costume and just something wasn't right there, at least for how I like to look and feel in my clothing. I don't know about you, but for me, when I see people out in the world that have amazing personal style that's just pushing the limits, pushing the bar, trying cool new things, that is what gives me so much inspiration to me, myself, think outside of the box and be more confident with trying new styles and silhouettes. So be that person out in the world that inspires other people. For instance, at my last few office jobs, I definitely wore more bright colors, more interesting outfits than the typical bland office outfit. And people would always come up to me and say, oh my gosh, you're the only person that could pull that off. I could never wear that. And in reality, yes, anybody can wear anything. It's all about the confidence that you have. So if you feel really dorky wearing a hat, you're gonna look like a dork. But if you stand tall with your shoulders back and just, you know, rock the hat, then everyone is going to think you're the most, you know, confident, well-dressed person. That's the fun of personal style. It's about putting your own flair, your own attitude on it. That's what makes it super special and unique to yourself. And it's not just the clothes you wear, it's your hairstyle, your makeup, your jewelry, your tattoos, just any way you wanna express yourself, just do it. I give you the permission and the power to step into who you are, you've always been where you're going to live your life and feel incredible. I hope these questions and exercises have stirred something up in you, getting your creative juices flowing to really dig into who you are at the core, whatever your personal style may be. I know for me, when I see people out on the street, people that I love their style, it's never someone who is wearing the latest Kardashian looks or shopping Instagram ads. It is those people that have a super unique perspective. They have picked out clothes from their own closet, maybe thrifted something, and it's the way that they layer them together, piece them together to tell a story and just shine their own unique light. And let me know in the comments, if you feel the same way, who do you think are the most stylish people? Also, if you have any methods, techniques for uncovering your own personal style that has worked for you, whether it was intentional or accidental, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. I'm trying to get this community going, so get down there and fired up. <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Join the family here. I would love to have you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps other people see my channel. I'll catch you guys in my next video. I post new videos every week. Have a fun day. Bye.